Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to module five of the online training on digital agriculture. Module five will focus on data management, specifically looking at open data, big data, and mobile data collection in agriculture. So this course is on harnessing digital potential to accelerate entrepreneurship and youth business growth, organized by IDEP and its partners. In this presentation, we'll give you an overview of the fifth module that deals with data management in order to familiarize you with, first, the concept of open data and big data in agriculture, and then second, the basic education. And these concepts will also be dependent with use cases of open data and open data for agriculture. To take full advantage of this course and learn more, you need to read the comprehensive course material that accompanies the module narrative. These resources can be downloaded from the online platform. So just a reminder from module two on the fundamentals of, of the principle of data management. Uh, just to run through them very quickly. The first is uh, measuring impact with evidence, um, using rigorous data collection methods, presenting data in easy to interpret formats, then creating a culture of data use by prioritizing skills development and the efforts to use data with all stakeholder groups, including those whose data was collected. Having a holistic approach to data collection and analysis, selecting and using open data and interoperability standards. Now, some of the characteristics of open data are, they have its availability and access. The data must be available as a whole and at a reasonable cost of reproduction, preferably downloadable from the internet. That data must also be available in a convenient format and in an editable form. That's one characteristic of open data regarding availability and access. The second is reuse and redistribution. Open data must be available under a license that allows reuse and redistribution, including cross-referencing with other data sets. And this is very important because when you look at issues of copyright um, and plagiarism and all that, all those come into play. And finally, the last characteristic of open data is universal participation. Everyone must be able to use, reuse, and redistribute. There should be no discrimination against the fields of activity or against individuals or groups. For example, non-commercial restrictions that would prevent commercial uses of restriction on use for certain purposes, e.g. only the education are not allowed. So those are some of the three, those are the three characteristics of open data that we felt are very important for you to know. And so the definition and characteristic of open data can be summarized in this way. It must be inter, it must put interoperability at the center. And we'll explain what interoperability means. It refers to the ability of various systems or data sources to work together, that is to interoperate. In this case, it is the ability to interoperate or interweave different data sets. And uh, Gordon has an extensive webinar on data interoperability. And we will look um, in the subsequent slides and check the link to this Gordon website, which is like spearheading open data in agriculture so that you can watch this video on YouTube about what data interoperability really is. Then one example, like I've just said, the Global Open Data for Agriculture and Nutrition, that is Gordon, and that's the URL. It works at a very high level of governments, and the focus is really on agriculture and nutrition and really convincing governments to make this data available. So the mission of Gordon is to enable new and existing open data initiatives to focus on agriculture and nutrition, as I said previously, and then to encourage the agreement and publication of a common set of agriculture and nutritional data. In other words, increase the widespread awareness of ongoing activities, innovations, and good practices in these fields, that's agriculture and nutrition. And then advocate for collaborative efforts on future open data projects on agriculture and nutrition. As you can see, it's very specific to agriculture and nutrition and then build and facilitate the construction of programs, good practices and lessons learned that enable the use of open data, especially by and for the rural and urban poor, because issues of agriculture and nutrition definitely affect uh, the rural and urban poor more. 
So it would be nice for each one of you to take time and read more about Gordon and their open data policies and initiatives. So um, there is um, another example um, about steel in regard to Gordon and open data. And um, there's this abbreviation FAIR, which is uh, in line with summarizing what open data really should be about or is about. It should be findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, as we saw in the previous um, slides. And then um, still another example in Gordon, the Code of Conduct for Open Data. This tool offers clauses from which users should be able to select a clause if they think it is relevant and perform a check. There are 17 clauses available online and still they can be accessed on the Gordon website on www.gordon.info forward slash codes forward slash lists. So again, I encourage each one of you um, to take time and read these 17 clauses uh, since they are all available online. So we have an example here of uh, the website of Gordon, just showing us some of the pages uh, where we have the Agriculture Data Code of Conduct Toolkit. We have the Open, open Up Guide for Agriculture, and then we have training courses. I'm sure some of you have already been beneficiaries of these courses. For those who have not, even those who have already, uh, please go back and just um, look through again and you could find something new. So they offer various um, services and products and one of them is these training courses. So we've looked at open data. How about big data in agriculture? So big data by 2012, there is um, someone known by a, uh, a corporation, Gartner Corporation that described big data as high volume, high speed, and all widely variety information sets that require cost-effective and innovative forms of information processing that improve knowledge, decision-making, and process automation. Whereas the International Telecommunication Union, ITU, defines big data as a paradigm to enable the collection, storage, management, analysis, and visualization, potentially under real-time constraints of large data sets with heterogeneous characteristics. We'll look at that as we move on with our, with our slides. So big data in agriculture um, has three V concepts. There's a three V concept to it. First of all, uh, by definition, like I said in the previous slide, a paradigm of enabling the collection, storage management and analysis and visualization potentially under real-time constraints of extensive data sets with heterogeneous characteristics. That's according to ITU. And these characteristics are summarized into three, into the three V concept. The first being the volume. That's the amount of data collected, stored, analyzed, and visualized, which big data technologies need to resolve. So there's an issue of contention there. The second V is variety, different data types and data formats that are processed by big data technologies. And the third is velocity, which refers to both how fast the data is being collected and how fast the data is processed by big data technologies to deliver expected results. So additionally, some commentators also add veracity to the three V concept. So there is a fourth one added by some and not by others. And veracity refers to the uncertainty of the data and value, which refers to the business results from the gains in new information using data technologies. Other characteristics may be really added. And like I said, the source is really ITU. And that's also for each one of us is reading. And so this big data uh, works within an ecosystem and we can see some of the players in that ecosystem. We have the data suppliers who provide data from different sources to the data brokers. And this can be accessed by the big data service providers. Another important stakeholder is the data brokers. They connect between the data suppliers and the big data service providers. The data bro brokers can act as a clearing house for an open data market. The third are big data service providers. These support capabilities for big data analysis and infrastructure. 
big data service providers can act as big data platforms and extension of the existing data analysis platforms. And finally, big data service customers. These are the end users or a system that uses the results or services from a big data service provider. So these big data service customers may produce a new service or knowledge on consumer activities and furnish them outside the big data ecosystem. So this diagram basically summarizes what each of those um, uh, players uh, do to the ecosystem or what role they have in the ecosystem. So again, I will employ each one of you to just look at it and make sense of the diagram and see how each of these link with each other in regard to big data in agriculture. So we have an example of the CGIR platform for big data in agriculture. And um, for those of you who don't know the CGIR, it's a very big co consortium. And um, they have these platforms for big data in agriculture because they focus on so many aspects of agriculture and we'll see as we move on. So the goal of this CGR platform for big data in agriculture is to harness the capabilities of big data to accelerate and enhance the impact of international agricultural research. So the biggest major focus is research. And you can check out that big data platform of the CGR on that URL, uh, the HTTP bigdata.cgir.org forward slash about um, the dash the dash platform forward slash so just click on that and read more about the cgi ar platform so their platform for big data and agriculture is organized around six communities of practice and these are the communities of practice like i said they focus so much on um, a lot of information on agriculture and a lot of research so these communities of practice are data-driven agronomy so this is to really strengthen innovation of technology and big data to tackle the array of agriculture challenges, such as yields, reducing hunger and all that. And then the second community of practice is crop modeling. And this is basically a community that encompasses a wide range of quantitative application based around the broad concept of parameterizing interactions within and among the main drivers of cropping systems. So I hope you all understand that a community of practice is really a group of people that come together with a common goal. So the CGIR uh, platform has six of these communities of practice that focus on big data. And these are the ones we are going through. So the first was data-driven agronomy, crop modeling. Now we're on geospatial data. And this really facilitates their research using geospatial data analysis, undertaking activities to bring special scientists together through a series of coordinated communication and activity. The next is ontologies, ontologies data. And this community focuses on the use and application of semantics for data harmonization at the level of collection and storage and for data interoperability and data discovery following the other fair principle that we looked at in the previous slides. Then we have the information and data management. Of course, this one is very direct. It's really information and managing data that is collected. And then livestock, of course, this brings together livestock, people who are specialists in um, livestock. And that is really to look at several aspects around livestock, could be disease, could be transborder um, uh, monitoring and everything that looks at livestock. And then we have the socioeconomic data community of practice. So all this strategize on each of these um, areas of focus. And again, I employ each one of you to go and read more about all of those. And depending on what interests you more, you read more on that and concentrate more on that. So these are the ones that I've just been explaining um, in detail. So I don't think I'll repeat this. There, there's, um, there's supposed to be six, however, we have seven here. And there are very many more actually you can check. So there's a data-driven agronomy, crop modeling, geospatial data, ontological data, information and data management, livestock data, and then socioeconomic data. So we talked about the COBO toolbox. And this is a mobile data collection practice. 
So they use this Kobo toolbox to collect data using the mobile phone. First of all, it is free and open source. I hope you all understand what open source is. <laughs> so it is developed by Harvard Humanitarian Initiatives and Brigham and Women's Hospital. This tool is developed to meet the needs that users who travel to places of crisis and natural disaster may have. So they say the, the tool is simple, robust, and powerful for data collection. Let's all go and try this tool. Just go visit www.cobotoolbox.org. I expect to read the experiences on the online platform following um, our interaction with the Kobo Toolbox. So this it's also very can be used on mobile gadgets like that interoperability uh, function also besides different data sets also different uh, applications different um, platforms can be used so you can see their phones there's a laptop you can use it on a tablet so just try and, and uh, see how it works for you so yeah, again, visit cobotoolbox.org to just see how it works and those who have used it to share their experiences. And thank you very much for listening. As always, we look forward to getting to know and exchange with you about your experiences in digital agriculture from the online platform. Feel free to ask questions about this presentation or the documentation provided. We are here to help you deepen your understanding and we'll do anything in our power to ensure you pass the course. Thank you all. And this is from the pedagogical management team. Let's continue online. Thank you.